What is up guys? Welcome back to the channel. Today I got a quick no frills update for you on the Forerunner build and my dad's Cherokee build. So we have a trip coming up this weekend. Uh, we're going to Colorado. So I'm going to have a vlog about that. We're going to go Black Bear Pass. We're going to do like a bunch of other trails. So that should be pretty sick. But I wanted to update you guys on what I've done to the Forerunner and not mix the build footage in with the vlog so if you watch my last video i was building this bumper and i'll put a link up here somewhere if you guys want to check that out see how i did this, this is a coastal off-road bumper kit and then i welded it all together and got it powder coated so yeah last time you guys seen this it wasn't powder coated it was just all raw and i didn't have a winch in didn't have lights in anything like that now i have a harbor freight a 12,000 pound winch under that cover and then i upgraded to the synthetic rope and I got this little uh, winch deal. Grabbed that off Amazon. That's off Amazon as well. And so are these. Uh, these are Rigid Industries uh, dualies. We're leaving on Thursday, I think. Thursday afternoon or Friday morning. I'm just starting. So I'm gonna cut out a sticker that says hashtag last minute or something for this thing. Let me show you guys. New coil springs, some shocks. Um, so these are these right here are the longer shocks off of the fourth or fifth gen um, forerunner and that allows you an extra inch of wheel travel in the back and then I've got extended brake line pan hard correction kit for the rear axle so it centers it after you lift it new upper control arms for the front and a spacer lift right here for the front so the spacer lift was like a backup thing in case I didn't get my shocks because I ordered like fancy shocks for the front, but I didn't get it. So we're putting spacer lift on, control arms, and then everything on the rear. So hopefully we can get all that done, mount up the tires, and then we're going to run it for this weekend and see how it is. Update on that lift installation. So I'm putting the upper control arms on right now, and this is how it's going. So the upper control arms in, that was easy. You just have to unbolt a couple things right up there, slide that bolt out, bolt her right back in. The problem is you have to reuse these knuckles and you have to get this ball joint out of here, but the ball joint press won't fit in there with this knuckle on. So then you gotta unbolt the axle and then unbolt the um, lower control arm and the steering off of there as well. So that's where we're at, but those are gonna look sick though. This is what she looks like. Here's that little space for lift. And now this, like I said before, is temporary because I wasn't gonna be able to get my shocks in, which will come with lift springs and then an adjustable shock. So that's why I have all this set up right now. I'm not trying to cheap out, but I kind of had to for this for this trip to make it work. But now I didn't put the tires on because I left. I bought the lug nuts and left them at the tire store. So we're gonna have to go back there tomorrow, get those before I can put the tires on. But I did test fit them with the lift and it does work. So, I mean, it works on flat ground. Now coming back here to the back, my dad is working on the, the rear brake line extension and I am working on the Panhard um, geometry correction kit. So basically all it is is a bracket that welds on and then it corrects the geometry, I guess, I don't know. I also got different lift springs for the rear, which are gonna give me, I think it's like a three inch lift or two and a half inch lift in the rear. So those are stiffer. And then um, that extended brake line is right there. You can see it kind of pulled tight. And then this is the Panhard correction kit. She's right there, the 5100s, the new springs, um, the, the pan hard correction kit. So I showed the other side when I was welding it on and then this is the other side. So it just welds like right, this is the factory axle part right here and then where that seam is, is where that piece goes to. It goes right under there and then 
up on this side, but I ended up putting this little fish plate on here because like I just short arced this on there, just like regular MIG welding and it's not, I don't know. I ground this out and then put the weld in there and then there was a little bit of a gap right here so I welded that. But I just wasn't 100% confident in it so I threw that on there just to kind of brace it up a little bit. But threw a little rattle can paint on there. I also got that new brake line in right here. Blood the brakes. Um, I had to adjust the emergency brake cable and stuff because when it was at full droop it was pulling kind of tight so basically just loosened this bracket right here up and then pushed it over this way and the same thing with my wires for my um, locker right here I just pushed the bracket over a little bit there's the diff drop kit right there that silver piece right there all right so if you watched my last video when I was building that bumper this Jeep was on the lift and it looked in way worse condition so these axles right here from a JK which is my mom's Jeep he took them out to put some Rubicon axles from whatever the newer Jeeps are called so he had those axles put that in there um, he got Fox shocks on there he got rock link suspension or something I can't remember but these bars are all new that one there and then the two that come down to the axle uh, Fox steering stabilizer now to make everything work, he had to modify the pitman arm right here. Um, he could tell you more about it, but maybe I'll have him do that. He's got a whole bunch of stuff. Also got the Harbor Freight 12,000 pound apex winch on there. Um, bumper, I think that's from Amazon. Got LED lights. He did some paint work, fixed the hood, painted the stripe on there. The rack and all that was already on there when he bought it, so I don't know much about that. Um, had a bunch of rust because whoever put these flares on before just hacked everything apart and then just left it open, so it rusted a little bit, and then it was just getting mud in there. So he fixed all that. He's got new leaf springs. I think it's a five and a half inch lift uh, spring on the back. Those shims we talked about, axles from the same Jeep. He had to modify the brake lines and the emergency brake cable to make that all work new uh cross brace right there he welded up a bunch of stuff just cleaned everything up real nice wheels and tires these are the ridge grapplers now he's just kind of like refining the last things before the trip and one of those things is a major vibration in the drive lines right yeah it's got it's a pretty good vibration so then i did some more research I set up the pinion angle to match the transfer case, which when you have the double carbon drag line, you don't want to do that. So now my pinion angle's at five degrees and it's supposed to be 18. So I'm gonna have to uh, put a wedge underneath the spring, which luckily my old springs, the Rusty's has the wedge on it that I need. So I just need to mount it up. These angles that he's talking about is the angle between this and this right here so he has to adjust this up a little bit and to do that he's gonna put a wedge underneath here so it's um, since these are welded on the mounts for the axle it'll go right between the spring and that and then that should rotate it up and hopefully stop the vibration so yeah. she can make it to Colorado 15 degrees of difference is quite a bit on a on an axle so yeah, that's where we're at. This thing's all cleaned up, looking ready to go. A couple days. Hope we'll get her. Here's the wheels for the runner. And here's the wedge that I was talking about. So he's going to take this off and then put that on the new springs and the axle underneath there. And that should dial her in. Last night he did put those, those wedges under there. We took it for a drive way better like it makes a huge difference when you have the right angles on your drive lines and everything so definitely uh pay attention to that and if you do a build that ends up vibrating like no other then check your your drive line and differential angles when we took it on the drive we ran into yet another problem and the problem is we got that right there now it's never a good sign when you got a leak and it's never a good sign when you got a leak coming from here steering box so 
apparently the gear or the seal blew out in there so it's got to get a new uh new system or rebuild that one okay so update on the jeep situation um we weren't gonna take it but now we're gonna take it so yeah well if we put the front drive line on it it works and we're gonna be leaving at five that's 250. so if we can finish building this it'll be good All right, so that's an update on the build, but uh, stay tuned for the actual vlog of the trip because it was actually super cool, and here's a little teaser of it. But I haven't got it edited yet, so that will be next week. Anyways, catch you guys then. Thanks for watching. Peace out. Woo!